Hello, in this dot programming video, I am going to show you debugging. If you've been following the rest of the series, the rest of the videos, you will notice that I'm using a different IDE now. I'm using a more conventional IDE. It is IntelliJ. And the reason for that is you cannot debug online on dot lang, but you can in pretty much any other IDE. The IDE you choose is your choice and the debugging for the most part will be very similar. I will provide a link so you can set up IntelliJ if you want to on your system. It could be a Mac, it could be Windows, it could be Linux, it doesn't matter. But I'll provide a link for that. So if I put a print line here and let's say I create a variable. So if I do int x equals 10 and I'll do int y equals 20 and I'll do x times by y and I run it I get 200 for example imagine imagine if I do y equals 90 now run it we get 900 you know simple stuff but you know if we've got complex code and you know there's a lot of it and it's hard just to look at it and see the exact flow of it and the value that we're getting, the you know, the output isn't what we want. What we can do is set something called a breakpoint. And as the name suggests, it literally breaks up that point. And to do that, if you just go to the left-hand side, just click the line you want to, you know, basically once that line, you get the program gets to that line, the application breaks. So if we run it now, it runs fine. So you need to make sure you run it in debug mode. So you need to debug it. Again, depending on the ID, it might be slightly different. If you, you know, need some help, feel free to pop me a message. So if I click this now, as you can see, it has essentially, I want to say crashed, but it's just broken at this point. And it tells me what are what's X and Y at this particular moment. And if we press this button, we can continue. And if I put a breakpoint here, and if I was to just run it, it, it you know it doesn't change. But if I was to debug it, x and y is 10 and 20. And if I click the next line, it's gone, it's continued running, it's hitting another breakpoint, so it's stopped and it's, and it's highlighted the line. But as you can see, y has now, now changed to 20. So that's really cool. It allows me to see what the value of you know a particular variable is, and that's what's really, really useful about debugging. Obviously, with this example, we can see what the value is. But imagine if you've got an application with loads of classes, with loads of methods, maybe getting input from the user, and that input goes from one class to another class to another method which processes it, gets information from a database, and sends it to another function that, you know, manipulates it in some way, and you think it should be, you know, X, or, you know, let's say you think it should be 900, and you get it, and it's, I don't know, 90. You might be looking at a Y, and, you, you can start seeing at, uh, at different points what the value of a variable is and how it's changing and you can say ah it's, it's at this point it's right but this later location the variable isn't what i think it should be and you can say okay maybe i've multiplied you've divided it the wrong way for example that's really all debugging is if you have any questions feel free to pop me a message you can add as many debug points as you want and to get rid of them you just click them again and that's it. So if we debug it, it just runs it normally if there is no actual breakpoints. If you have any questions, feel free to pop me a message. And as usual, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.